Hello everyone, welcome to Media B Color Lab. Today I'm going to show you five result secrets that I use on real projects every single day. And they're all built in DaVinci Resolve. These are tricks that will change the way you grade. That will make your grades uh, cleaner, more cinematic and easier to control. So without further ado, let's dive in. All right, I want to start with the importance of skin tone. We often hear that color grading is subjective, and that's true, it is an art form. But there are certain areas where our eyes expect some uh, consistency and realism, and skin tone is one of the biggest of those. Here I have a beautiful image. I already did the basic CSD notes, uh, to display the image in the correct color space, and then a quick contrast adjustment. Now, looking at the skin tone and the vector scope, it is actually hard to tell where the skin tone is uh, sitting. There is basically too much information overlapping. So here is the trick. I add a corrector note and connect it all the way uh, back to the very beginning of the note tree. Now, let's create a small mask here to isolate just the skin area. And I remove the, the softness completely and adjust the size. Now we can place it somewhere on her skin. Perfect. The next step is to take the alpha, the blue output of this corrector note and connect it to the CSD output note, the alpha channel. What this does is that we can now clearly see the masked skin in the vector scope. If I disable and enable the note, uh, you'll notice it immediately. As you can see, the skin is staying above the skin tone indicator, so it is closer to red, uh, leaning magenta. By the way, uh, you can turn on the skin tone indicator here in the settings uh, if you're not seeing it. Now, let's correct that. In the balance note, I use the HDR global wheel and gently pull the hue toward the skin tone line, right about here. Here. Now let's disconnect the alpha output so we can see the full image again and uh, toggle the balance note on and off. Beautiful. We can clearly see the skin tone is where it should be now. Subtle but an important adjustment. Okay, now let's move to something just as important. Perceived sharpness. This second image is looking really good, but if you look closely, it is missing that final bit of crispness. Uh, I'm not talking about digital sharpness, uh, not video sharpness, but that filmic clean highlight sharpness that makes the image uh, feel uh, premium. And the key is this, we want to sharpen the image, but without destroying the creamy soft uh, shadows. This is where most beginners ruin uh, their images actually. They sharpen globally and then, you know, suddenly everything becomes noisy and crunchy. So here is how we do it properly. I start by keying only the highlights. Let's turn on highlight mode so we can see what we're isolating. Now, I raise the low slider until all the shadow areas go completely dark. Only the bright parts of the face and clothing should remain, remain visible. I soften the selection just a touch. We don't want a, a hard edge. Uh, but the idea is simple. Black stays untouched. Only the bright areas will receive uh, sharpening. Now we go to the blur sharpen panel. Before doing anything, I change coloring softness and level to 50. This helps the sharpening behave more like uh, film. It protects the fine grain structure, avoids amplifying noise, and gives us a cleaner, more organic uh, sharpening response. Uh, now I will simply lower the radius. As I bring it down, you'll see the highlights tighten beautifully. The eyes, hair edges, the small details in the clothing, uh, all the shadows stay untouched, still nicely uh, and creamy. 
but uh, the highlights look much more beautiful now. Let's toggle it on and off. Perfect. Now we have that filmic highlight snap without compromising the softness that makes the, the image feel uh, high-end. If you want, you can go back to the key panel and uh, tweak it further uh, based on your taste. Beautiful. Now let's move into something I use every single day. A contrast technique that only works properly uh, if one setting is enabled in your project settings. So let's go to the project settings, general options, and make sure use S-curve for contrast is checked. This is important because with this option enabled, the, the primary wheels uh, behave in a much more filmic way. Uh, that is, uh, instead of applying a linear contrast, Resolve now applies a subtle S-curve. So your blacks roll off softer, your highlights don't clip as aggressively, and everything feels more organic. All right, let me show you how I use it. In this shot, the, the image looks nicely balanced, but a little flat. What I'm going to do is use gain and lift to shape my contrast. And I'll use offset as my pivot, uh, meaning offset uh, will decide where the contrast tilts. Let's switch to the waveform. I'll start by gently increasing gain until the midtones open up. You'll notice the whole image lifts evenly, but because the S curve uh, is on, uh, the highlight roll-off still stays smooth, uh, very filmic. Now I'll pull offset down to bring the overall exposure back into a more reasonable place. Here you can go back and forth between gain and offset until you like the, the contrast. And finally I'll use lift to settle the shadows, just a tiny touch. Let's toggle it on and off. Beautiful. You can see the image gains presence, depth, and density, all without harsh or uh, video-ish, you know, contrast. All right, let's move on to the fourth trick. In this one, I want to show you how to change a very specific color in your image without affecting anything else. And we are going to do it using the color warper. In this shot, for example, let's say we want to shift her outfit from this red tone into something a bit, uh, let's say, more orange. Super simple. First, I'll switch the color warper into point-to-point -point mode. Then I'll click right on her outfit. And there it is. The hue is now selected, as you can see in the warper. Now, of course, we don't want her skin tones to move with this adjustment. So just in case, before we make any changes, I'll go to the isolation option click on her skin to add a pinpoint there. This basically tells Resolve, keep this color locked, don't let it shift. Great, now we can go back to the outfit point and simply drag it toward the hue we want. Something around here. Maybe a bit more toward the warm oranges. Let's toggle it on and off. Perfect, clean, isolated and very natural. Uh, this is a simple trick, but incredibly powerful tweak without building uh, complicated keys or masks. Before I share the last tip, I want to take a quick moment to share something exciting. If you've been following my channel, you know that I released my first cinematic LUD collection back in March. And since then, it's been used by more than 350 filmmakers and colorists like you all around the globe. And the feedback I received has been incredible, and that's the part I'm most proud of. Since then, a lot of you asked for new LUDs, and I recently released Volume 2 after working on it for several months. Volume 1 uh, is more classic, clean, film-inspired looks. They are very flexible, very universal. Volume 2, on the other hand, goes deeper into richer palettes, moodier tones, and more stylized filmic aesthetics. And I think they complement each other really well, depending on what you're working on and what you're looking for. And just like before, these are the exact lots I use across feature films, short films, uh, commercials, and music videos. They're built inside a real motion picture color pipeline, so they're not like those uh, drag and drop uh, YouTube style lots. They are meant to give you a very solid 
uh, cinematic foundation, a starting point, and then the rest you stylize based on your own taste and needs. So, if you are just starting out, these LUTs will instantly make your grades cleaner, more consistent, and far more filmic. And if you are already experienced, they will save you a lot of time and also give you a beautifully controlled palette to build on. And since Volume 2 just launched, I think this is the perfect time to jump in. I'll leave the links in the description. You can explore the before and after examples and also watch my LUT tutorials uh, so you can decide for yourself if these fit your own color grading workflow. Alright, now let's get back to the fifth and final tip. This one is incredibly powerful for shot matching and I genuinely use it in every single project I create. We have four clips here and after doing a quick primary balance, I want to see if they actually live in the same world. And the fastest way to check that is by using Resolve's split screen mode. So let's click here and make sure selected clips is enabled. Now I'll select all four shots while holding Command, Control if you're on Windows, and you'll immediately see them displayed side by side in the viewer. Now, whichever shot you want to adjust, you just click on it directly in the viewer. Right away, I can see that these two clips look a little brighter uh, compared to the top two. So let's click on this one and bring the brightness down using the, the gain wheel. Much better. Now, let's click on this one. Again, lower the, the gain a touch. Yes, already looking more unified. By the way, you can also use offset just to nudge things into the same space. There we go. Let's do it here again. The offset. Beautiful. Now, all four shots feel like they belong together. Same world, same mood. All right, that wraps up the five tricks. I hope these gave you something practical that you can use right away in your own grades, whether you are just starting out or you've been doing this uh, for a while. And if you like this tutorial, please feel free to like the video, uh, leave a comment and subscribe. It genuinely helps the channel grow and also lets me keep making, you know, this type of content for you. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.